are a lot of uh, incredibly important points in the book. You know, I think most dramatically, uh, ratings, the ratings agency ratings were considered the most important measure of risk available. And AAA uh, rated securities were deemed perfectly safe. What we discovered though was that suddenly there were AAA rated securities that became worthless. And so clearly there's something wrong with those ratings. What I show in the book is that STL, which is a, a generalization of the traditional term of leverage applied to new products, that we had AAA rated securities that were 2,000 times levered, that were sitting in money market funds, and which only require 96 basis points worth of capital under Basel II banking rules. The 2007 to 2009 crisis has enormous parallels with previous crises, in particular the 1929 crash and uh, the 1987 crash, the 1990 Japanese financial crisis, and, and all of the recent crises. What we show in the book is that the types of risks that, that occurred in 2007 to 2009 actually are the same kinds of risks that got us into trouble in the 1920s. In the 1920s, in fact, you had a shadow banking system much like the shadow banking system today, but I don't think yet most people have quite realized that. In the 1920s, there was something called investment trusts. These investment trusts were structures that were originally set up in order to purchase equities and to allow smaller investors access to a widely diversified pool of, uh, of equity risks. These investment trusts then morphed into special purpose vehicles that would themselves issue a capital structure. They would issue debt, they would issue uh, preferred shares, and common equity. So they would issue this capital structure then in order to buy the equity of companies. If you think about it, you've got a leveraged, a leveraged structure that's in turn buying leveraged securities. This is very much like today's asset-backed securities. As the 1920s went on, these investment trusts then went further. Uh, there were new investment trusts that again issued debt, preferred shares, and equity. And they used that money in order to buy the equity of investment trusts which had in turn their own capital structures and had used that money in order to buy the common equities. We've got a layering of leverage and what we show in the book is that at each and every step you multiply the risk. That structure and the CDOs of 2007 to 2009 basically have the same exact risk characteristics. And if you think about it, they also were about the same size. Was it big enough, was it important enough in the 1920s to actually cause the huge run-up in stock prices and then the subsequent collapse? And I think the answer is yes. In his uh, 1954 work, John Kenneth Galbraith tells us that he believes that this was the primary cause of the crash. And not only that, we can look at the size. There were several billion of these structures outstanding uh, just before the crash in 1929. Uh, if you look at the GDP of the United States in 1929, it was a bit over 100 billion. What you can calculate then is that these structures made up about 7.8% of U.S. GDP. If we convert that into today's language, uh, that would be the equivalent of about 1.1 trillion worth of these structures. If you look at cash CDOs from 2001 through 2009, uh, according to SIFMA, there were 1.7 trillion of these structures. So we have the same type of structure, the same type of risk, and about the same size when suddenly the system collapsed. The, the Basel I regulations played an important role in terms of trying to create a level playing field for regulations globally. Um, Basel II then tried to make them much more risk sensitive. The risk sensitive measure they chose were ratings. Uh, the unfortunate thing is that the ratings of structured products miss an incredibly important element of risk. The ratings for structured credit products are based upon the expected losses of a security or the probability of a first dollar of loss of security. Both of those concepts are based on first predetermining uh, what future loss distributions might look like. But as we know from the works of, of Mandelbrot and Nassim Taleb, 
uh, we're actually very, very poor at predicting those distributions, especially with the preciseness that's required to get something like a AAA rating. Nonetheless, uh, those distributions were used to predict lo losses on securities, and it facilitated a massive increase in leverage in the banking system that, uh, yeah, w facilitated its subsequent near collapse. I think it's clear we need a new measure of risk. Before the banking crisis, we felt that AAA rated securities were riskless. Uh, we believed that the banking system was well capitalized. We thought that AAA rated insurance companies were completely safe. But then all of a sudden, uh, during what was like a collapse, uh, AAA rated securities, many AAA rated securities became worthless and banks around the globe and insurance companies around the globe required government assistance in order to prevent their defaults. Clearly, the whole framework that we use to measure and manage risk is missing some element of risk. What element of risk is it missing? All of those structures, their risk measurement and their management are based upon predicting future loss distributions. Uh, what they don't tell you is the sensitivity to an error in those loss distributions. STL tells you about, it, it is a measure, a way of viewing your sensitivity to an error in a loss distribution. It tells you what might happen if your distribution is wrong. 